Hello, Rebecca. Let's get to your portfolio review. Okay, so your first shot, uh, it's... I really like it because it uh, it draws me in. Obviously, whenever we have stairways and especially a curve in a path, it draws the eye into the picture space. And I absolutely love this garden. It looks very peaceful and calm. The only thing I'd suggest, it's a little bit bluish. And this is normal because I think you photographed it probably early in the day. And whenever we're in shadow, shadow areas produce a blue color cast. Uh, as you can see, the we have a nice warm yellow uh, look where the sun is shining, but everything else is blue. So there's two things you can do. Obviously, the easiest one and the one that is most common is to simply add yellow to the entire picture. So under a temperature slider, sometimes called white balance in different software, just simply go to the yellow side. Now, if, let's take a look at um, the before and after. Here's the original. And this is how, sort of as it's warmed up a little bit to the yellow side. For example, in Lightroom CC, it's plus 23 to the yellow. However, depending on the software that you're using, it'll be a, a different number. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the other option, which is a little bit more complex, but probably a little bit more accurate, if your software has the ability to do linear gradients, a linear gradient is interesting because what it does is it allows you to create certain areas of, uh, of uh, affected change, for lack of a better word. So take a look at what happens when I add yellow where I created my gradient. To see if I put my, my cursor over this little blue dot, everything that is being adjusted turns, turns red. This is a, a masking technique or sort of a, a way for us to understand what areas are being affected. Now if I back out you'll see that the we have a yellowish, a nice warmish look to the stairs. We've maintained the uh, the yellow where the sun is shining but there's no change up here. This is where the linear gradient comes in really handy. Now you could also do the same up at the top. So let's create a new linear gradient we're going to reset the temperature and we're going to go down instead but this time we want to maintain the green of the trees so we'll just add a little bit of yellow but we're going to add tint now tint we're going to go to the green side now the reason why is because we if you add too much yellow to greenery to either trees or shrubs or, or leaves it sort of loses its uh, I don't know what, what you'd say. It loses its 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 um its effectiveness because you don't see the uh, the pop of the green as as much. But when you go to tint and you go to the green side in tint, plus adding a little bit of yellow, a bit a bit of warmth, you actually come away with a, a much nicer picture. And we can add just a touch of saturation. Okay, so now what we have is a nicely warmed up stair here. It actually looks like the sun is shining in this area really nicely. And uh, we haven't really touched the midsection because we don't need to. And we've maintained the green up top, but warmed it up as well. Let's look at the before. Here's the before, and here's the after. Okay, so let's get to your next picture. So this is a nice documentary shot and of uh, someone's tattoos. I feel that overall the picture is a little bit too, what, what technically we would say it's too hot, meaning it's a bit too bright in, in certain areas. So what we're going to do is two things. We can either obviously just reduce the general exposure. This is called a global adjustment, uh, like that. Or if you didn't want to adjust globally, meaning everything gets darker, you can selectively selectively choose maybe just highlights. So we could reduce highlights. And what that does is it keeps the, for lack of a better word, the volume of brightness throughout the whole picture. However, it just reduces the highlight areas that you saw in the grass and, and some parts of the skin. So by reducing highlights quite a bit, it's actually probably going to be good because we maintain the brightness of the picture, which is nice. Now one thing I will mention that I feel that the text on the shirt is distracting. 
So I would be tempted just to remove it completely. And the reason we're doing this is because all attention should be on the tattoo, the both arms. If we have the text, we're actually tempted. Let me back up here. We're actually tempted to read the text. And because it's not necessary, we're not really caring too much about the event in 2018. Let's just get rid of it. And that will really focus us on what's most important is the tattoos. Now, this is almost a square, um, which is perfectly good. However, if you want to create a perfect square, say, for example, nice Instagram uploading or framing, simply go to your aspect ratio. And any software will allow you to do this. Go to one to one, which is a square. And at this point, you can simply move the picture around as you like. So if I was going to work in a square aspect ratio, I'd probably crop something like this. Okay, let's get to your next picture. Okay, so this is the, uh, the overall shot of the woman with the, the um, tattoos. So what we're going to do here, I feel that we really need to get rid of some, sp some space here. <clears throat> so let's go to, and actually I think we need to rotate the picture too. I feel it's a little bit needing a clockwise rotation. Okay, so now let's pull the, uh, okay, that clockwise rotation is good. Now we're going to unlock the aspect ratio so that we can actually crop the way we want. Now take a look at what happens when I'm choosing where the intersecting point of the horizontal rule of thirds, top portion, top portion and the vertical rule of thirds line, which is to the right. We want to have the intersecting point somewhere in the usually you want it either intersecting the head or the body of the person so let's tap that to accept it and this would be following a traditional rule of thirds composition and the nice thing about this is we have less space behind the person's head and more space in front so that it has that uh, that good flow and the person is well framed within the picture space Again, it's a little hot. See the, the bright spots? So let's go to our highlights. We're just gonna reduce them a little bit. Now, you, uh, I asked for JPEGs for the portfolio review. If you shot this in RAW, you would find that the highlight reduction works absolutely wonderfully. It works, works great when you're shooting in RAW format. Okay, great, let's go to the next picture. And this is a really nice shot. I, I love the colors. You did a great job with uh, the colors and also your background blur is really good. My only suggestion is that this draws my eye. Now we don't want anything to distract us from the primary subject which of course is this lovely jewelry. So what we're going to do is push the viewer's eye straight to the jewelry. And again, we are destroying our normal aspect ratio of, uh, of 8 by 10 or 8 by 12 or whatever it was. However, by sort of cleaning up the composition, even though we do make a different aspect ratio for your picture, it's, it's well worth it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So take a look at this. When we, have, when we got rid of that distracting white part of the picture, now we have a situation where our eye goes straight to the gold, as it were, right to the, uh, the primary subject, and that's what we want. Now, Lightroom does not do this well, but do you see these, these, um, these highlights here? I would be tempted to actually soften those highlights in Photoshop. If you have Adobe's Photographer's Plan, it usually comes with Photoshop, and Lightroom and Bridge. If that's the case, you could go to File, Edit in Photoshop, and then you could just take your clone stamp and just gently, with a 50% opacity, just get rid of this. Uh, not get rid of it, sorry, just reduce the brightness of it. That's all you need. However, if you just have the Lightroom CC plan, don't worry about it. It's This is not a deal breaker. 
and it's just be, me being nitpicky. So I would say that you're good with this composition. Some people would probably tend to go a little bit lower, just so that the, uh, the jewel is a touch higher than middle. And if you like, this is probably a, a really good composition as well. And yeah, I think you did a great job. Okay, so let's go to the last picture. And this is a black and white. I think you did a great job with turning it black and white. And the reason being is that whenever we have a situation where there's not much color in the picture to begin with, such as this shot, why not try it as a more artistic black and white? The only thing I would suggest under light is we go to our blacks and let's reduce the blacks to make it even more dramatic. Okay, do you see what's happening? Let's go to the before. Here's the before. It's nice, you, you did really well with composition, but it, it sort of lacks a bit of drama. However, when we reduce the blacks, the drama really picks up and it looks more like a fine art black and white shot. Okay, really great work, uh, Rebecca. I enjoyed going through your review and hopefully you got a lot out of it.